A lot of characters, stratagems and unit abilities provide valuable shooting buffs in Warhammer 40k. In this video we'll talk about the maths behind all of these buffs, perhaps helping you weigh up which are best. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So this one is going to be a bit of a mathsy one, we'll be talking about quite a lot of numbers in this video. On the channel we talk quite a lot about various different characters that provide different percentage damage increases, that provide different special rules and often different percentage damage increases to your model's attacks in the shooting phase. In this video we're going to try and put as many of the shooting phase buffs together in comparison so it's quite easy to weigh up between the lot. Is it better to have a space marine captain with reroll ones to hit? a lieutenant with reroll ones to wound, or perhaps the chaplain giving you plus one to hit. We'll talk about all of those numbers and plenty more besides, to hopefully let people understand the actual relative value of these buffs, particularly when you're trying to think about choosing one over the other. First of all though, just before we get into the main video, I thought we'd talk about damage output. Generally, I find the most helpful way to do Math Hammer in 40k is to think about the actual damage output that a unit is likely to get at the end of the shooting sequence. It doesn't necessarily matter exactly how many hits a unit gets or how many wounds they get, all that really matters is that end number that those rolls feed into, the amount of wounds that are taken by the enemy unit after any saving throws. For example, if this unit of intercessors is feeling a bit mean and is going to pick on these Gretchen here, they'll fire their six bolt rifle shots, hitting on threes, averaging four hits, and then wounding on twos, averaging three and a third wounds. The Gretchen get no save to speak of against these powerful rounds. So the average damage output of these intercessors is three and a bit wounds on the Gretchen. Pretty much most of the percentages that we'll be talking about in this video are percentage modifiers to that average damage output, which if you really wanted to, you could calculate. Say you had a space marine captain nearby, re-rolling ones to hit, that will always give you a 17% average damage output increase, and if you add an extra 17% of 3.33 onto itself, then those intercessors will now get an average of 3.9 wounds on the Gretchen, so that percentage damage increase has resulted in about an extra half a wound in this particular shooting scenario. Obviously that's not much, but we're only buffing three bolt rifles here. On really big shooter units, such as say a repulsor executioner, small percentage increases can actually translate into quite a lot more wounds on the enemy target, just because the guns that are being fired are so massive or fire so many shots. So with all that being said, let's take a quick look at the actual numbers that result from various different buffs. So here we have a big table of how good basically most of the buffs to hit, wound and against armor saves are in the game. And then a little bit about how stacking buffs interact, so how you can calculate how much better your unit is getting. I know there's an absolute ton of numbers on here, we'll have a quick talk through each section and break it down into manageable chunks, but I thought it might be kind of handy if anyone particularly wanted to have all these numbers in one place, just so they could directly compare one thing to another should they want to. I'll post this slide to the Orspets Tactics Facebook page and Patreon page for when the video comes out, should anyone particularly want a copy. Let's talk about the hit roll section first then. First of all, if you have a unit that has re-roll ones to hit, it will just be a flat 17% or one sixth better than it would have been otherwise. This is the same no matter how good the unit is at shooting, because re-rolling ones equates to essentially more of the same shots. Whenever you roll dice, a certain proportion of them are going to be ones, and they'll translate into more shots of the same caliber, whether you're hitting on a very good ballistic skill or a very bad ballistic skill. It can make it very nice and easy for calculating just how many extra wounds you'll get from a captain's aura, as supplies the same power benefit to everyone around them. If we go one better and look at chapter master auras, then this does actually depend on the ballistic skill of the firer. This is because every time you re-roll failed hits, you're rolling more dice of the same ballistic skill, but you'll get to roll a lot more of those dice if you have a lot of fails in the first place. So starting at Ballistic Skill 2+, plus, it's exactly the same as re-roll 1s, as you'd expect, as they're the only failed shots. Ballistic Skill 3+, plus is 33%, Ballistic Skill 4+, plus is 50%, and Ballistic Skill 5+, plus is 66%. I didn't include it here, but Ballistic Skill 6+, plus will be 83%, which is one of the reasons that having 4 re-rolls to hit is just so great when buffing Overwatch. It means that Chapter Masters and their equivalents are extra good at buffing anything that doesn't have an extra good Ballistic Skill. It can be particularly valuable for things like Space Marine Stalkers, who suffer minus 1 to hit when they're shooting at ground targets, or maybe even in melee with things like Power Fists with minus 1 to hit. So basically chapter master style upgrades become a better relative buff to the unit, the lower the ballistic skill. In terms of modifiers to hit, such as the plus one modifier that you might get for a space marine chaplain casting a litany of plus one to hit on the unit, again this depends on your starting ballistic skill. Naturally on twos you can't get any better and ones always fail, so it doesn't provide any buffs at all. On threes it's a 25% buff, on fours it's a 33% buff, 
and on 5s it's a 50% buff, so basically any modifier that gives you plus 1 to hit is far more valuable on worse ballistic skill platforms. This is one of the reasons that the custom job Sparkly Bits is so excellent in Orcs. This gives Orc vehicles plus 1 to hit, and as they often go from Ballistic Skill 5+, plus to Ballistic Skill 4+, plus, you've essentially added 50% to the damage output of the unit, so it's essentially like shooting with 1.5 of the same unit. This does work the other way as well, however, and negative modifiers to hit are much more punishing on the worst Ballistic Skill armies. For example, Imperial Guard going from hitting on 4s to hitting on 5s is a loss of 33% accuracy, where going from hitting on 2s to hitting on 3s is only a loss of 20%. Plenty of armies have the ability of having exploding sixes to hit, which is the general term for where you roll a six on the to hit roll, and it gives you maybe two hits on the target instead of one, or it allows you to have an extra shot with the same weapon, such as the orcs daka 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 rule. If you get two hits instead of one, such as the chap's tactic for imperial fists when you're firing bolt weapons, it's a buff that depends on the firer's ballistic skill. If you're hitting on threes, then it's an extra 25% to the amount of damage output, if you're hitting on 2s then it's an extra 20%. It's really quite a powerful rule to have, particularly when it's on all the time for things like Imperial Fist Bolters. If the 6s just allow an additional extra shot, such as Orc Daka Daka Daka, then mathematically it's exactly the same as re-rolling 1s to hit. Again, you're just throwing more dice of the same calibre, so it's a flat 17% buff to shooting, no matter what unit it's on under normal circumstances. Finally, we have things like Salamanders or Expert Crafters style rerolls or Death Skulls Orcs, things that can give you just one extra reroll in the shooting phase and maybe ones in the wound or damage rolls as well. Naturally, if you're firing just with a unit with one single shot, then it equates to full rerolls, so you'd see that table but its effect gets steadily more diluted the more shots that you have with the same weapon. This is because if you have a whole bunch of misses, you can still only re-roll one of them. So for example, a Ballistic Skill 3 plus LAS Cannon would be a 33% damage buff if you were just firing one of them, but if you were firing a unit with two of them, that would drop to 27%, and if you happen to be firing a unit with three of them, it would drop to 23%. It gets very hard to math out, particularly if you have further similar re-rolls like the Wound Roll to Salamanders, but it's generally quite a good buff, though far stronger on small units with less shots. If we look over the similar rolls to wound here, then a lot of these follow very similar rules to the shooting phase. Firstly, I'd like to say that reroll once to wound is again just a flat 17% buff to shooting, just like the reroll once to hit, it is literally mathematically just as good. A lot of people like to correct me down in the comments of YouTube videos and say that re-rolling a 1 to hit in the shooting phase is better because you get more wound rolls, but I'm afraid it just doesn't math out like that. It's true that you will be re-rolling more 1s if you have reroll once to hit, but the reroll ones to wound will be more important because you know that those shots have already hit and are therefore more valuable than the shots that you don't know whether they will wound. Not 100% sure if I've entirely explained that clearly, but trust me, in a vacuum, reroll ones to hit and reroll ones to wound are directly equivalent from a mathematical point of view. And it does mean that if you want a pure buffing character and the choices between a captain or a lieutenant and you're not interested in their fighty profile, it's actually often going to be better to go for the lieutenant as he's a little bit cheaper and he provides the same damage buff. There aren't that many sources of full rerolls to wound as they're very powerful rules and really mess up the to wound table from the big rulebook. Full rerolls to wound are an incredibly powerful asset to have in Warhammer 40k. They follow the exact same table as we looked at before with the full reroll to hits. So again, it depends on just how good the wound roll is. Having four rerolls to wound will be a comparatively bigger buff if you're wounding on say fives or sixes compared with wounding on twos or threes. A lot of abilities, however, do give plus one to wound, such as the guided aim ability of these eliminators here. Again, how powerful this is depends massively on what you're shooting at. If you're wounding them on twos, then it won't do you any good. If you're wounding them on fours, then it's the equivalent of an extra 33% damage output. And if you're wounding them on sixes, essentially going to be getting twice the damage on the enemy targets. In particular, that can be one good reason why chaplain listeners with plus one to wound the closest unit are really quite powerful on large volumes of low strength fire, such as space marine aggressors. They're already good against infantry, and having plus one to wound might either increase their damage output by 50% or flat double hit against hard targets. There are a couple of abilities out there that cause two wounds on the roll of a six. This roll on the equivalent of strength is directly equivalent to plus one to wound, except Ballistic Skill 2 plus can benefit from it. Again, it's far stronger on the worst wound roll that you have. Obviously, if you're just wounding on sixes, then it's going to double the amount of wounds that you cause. There's another few abilities out there as well that cause sixes to be AP minus one. I believe the Flesh Terrors have this, getting themselves a little bit more AP in close combat. And there's a Tower Warlord trait that allows nearby units to nominate one unit and get extra AP on sixes. Now this one really does vary quite a lot depending on what's firing and what their target save is, as it both depends on buffing power depending on the wound roll and the saving throw of the target. If your unit's wounding on fours and the target has a four plus save, 
then it's an increase of 11%, and if the wound rolls a little bit easier, say you're wounding the target on threes, that's only a very marginal buff indeed at 8%, but if the target has a bit of a better save, then it's a stronger rule, as that extra AP will count for more, so it'll be a 16% buff there. In general, this rule will be better the lower your strength is, and the higher the opponent's save is. For example, this makes it a reasonably powerful option in the Emperor's Wrath Artillery Company, where you can get extra AP on sixes on Wyverns, who are AP zero, so the opponent will have quite a high save, and they've got quite low strength, meaning that you're often wounding on not the best numbers. Another common one is sixes causing mortal wounds, such as Eliminator Snipers or many other sniper weapons out there. Personally, I don't think that this one's worth expressing as a percentage damage increase at all. The actual percentage damage increase will depend on the wound roll that you're making against the target, the amount of saves that your opponent passes, and also the damage characteristic of the weapons that you're firing. If you really want to work out their damage output, then I just work this out independently and add it on to your total damage output at the end. Finally, just the same as hit rolls, master artisans, expert crafters, and death skulls can have these single re-rolls to wounds, just as they can have single re-rolls to hit. The wound rolls are a little bit trickier to calculate, as you don't know how many of them you're going to be getting, depending on how many of your shots hit. Again, it depends on how good the wound roll is, and how many hits you're getting through. And the more hits you get, the slight worse return you get on damage output. If you've just got the one shot, then it'll always be a flat damage boost, but if you have two or more, then it drops off progressively, in exactly the same way as the hit roll that we talked about before. Let's talk about saving throws next, where to be honest there tends to be less messy about with the rules, in general just sticking to things like extra AP minus 1 and things, because a lot of us remember the horrors of re-rollable saves and things as per 7th edition. Basically if you do have a buff that just improves your weapon's AP by minus 1, that's going to have the biggest impacts on things with the highest save, such as these terminators having a 2 plus save here, if you manage to get an extra AP minus 1, they drop to a 3 plus save, and that's actually an extra 100% increase in your damage output, because you have twice the likelihood of them failing a save. This makes the Space Marine combat doctrines incredibly helpful for weeding out other high armoured units or hiding in cover, which means that when you're in your army's appropriate combat doctrine, you're going to be doing a lot better against the tougher save models in your opponent's army. Again, this works conversely, if you get plus one to a save for some reason, the most common example being in cover, this has more value the higher your saving throw is. If you're already saving on a 2+, plus, obviously you don't get any bonuses, but if you're on a 3+, plus, and that's 100% increase in the durability, as you're halving the amount of wounds you'll take, and that drops as steadily less until when you're saving on a 6, it's really not that big a deal. Finally, if you come to calculate stacking buffs, which is often how you get really good efficiency out of your units in Warhammer 40k, provided all of the buffs apply to the same unit, then you generally need to multiply to stack different buffs together. You don't just add 17% to hit to 17% to wound, because actually if you hit more, then you'll have more chance at wounding more, so any buff to your wound roll is actually better. That means that the very common combination of captain and lieutenant, rather than just providing 33 or 34% damage buff, it actually increases by about 36%, so the two working in tandem are very slightly better than the individual benefits that either can provide by working apart. This can get even more silly if you're combining multiple stacking rules like this. Say you have these Imperial Fist Assault Centurions, and they're all armed with Hurricane Bolters in this example. The Imperial Fists get those extra hits on 6s that we talked about, and as they hit on 3s, that equates to a 25% damage buff. If they're also in range of their Captain and Lieutenant, then you can math out the percentage damage increase by multiplying 1.17 by 1.17 by 1.25. That shows the increase of 17%, 17%, and 25%, which means that just compared to a base squad of Assault Centurions with the same Hurricane Bolters, these guys will actually be firing 70% better between their chapter buff and the buffs from the two characters. This is why it's often a good idea to try and stack multiple character buffs on the same unit. You could even make this even more by giving them plus one to hit from a chaplain, or if you had a stratagem or something for giving them plus one to wound against a target. Say they were firing at a vehicle and used tank hunters, because the buffs multiply rather than add in most circumstances, things will get progressively more dangerous the more synergies that you can put on one unit. Of course, not all of the buffs will overlap this way. Say if you have re-roll ones to hit and you're also re-rolling full hits anyway, then those won't add at all because the re-roll ones to hit are completely useless because you're already re-rolling all the hits. The same for the salamanders type re-rolls, if you're already getting re-roll ones to hit and wound, then you'll be getting less rolls that you can use the salamanders type re-rolls on, so they'll be a bit weaker than otherwise, they're still very helpful I have no doubt. So I think we'll leave it there for the wild world of maths then. Honestly, I don't expect anyone to actually go around, calculate the relative damage increases for their unit's attacks every time they shoot or something, but it can be quite helpful to understand where these buffs are coming from, and in particular when you're deciding to weigh up whether or not one character is better than another for helping out your given unit in one given situation.
So I hope that's been of some help. If there's any errors or corrections I need to make, then please let me know down in the comments. Or if you have any other numbers for the buffs of certain niche units from your own codex. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics for plenty more. We have Warhammer 40k stuff coming out every day, usually of a tactics-orientated nature. If you've been enjoying the videos on the channel, then I do have a Patreon page, which is what allows me to keep on making all these videos quite so quickly and dedicate quite so much time to it. If you have been watching a few, then any support on the Patreon page is massively helpful, as it is what allows me to keep on doing this as more of a full-time thing. As well as helping keep the videos coming, you also get access to seeing videos early, get to vote on polls for what sort of videos come next on the channel, and there's the occasional prize draw where I post out some miniatures to someone in the world. If any of that sounds good, then feel free to take a look down at the link which is in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.